The TDOC catheter system setup is very straightforward. A Velcro strap is placed around the patient's leg fairly snugly. The pressure sensors are attached directly to the Velcro strap and are left in the open position. The electrodes are then placed on the patient pararectally as well as grounded on her leg. The urethra is then prepared in a sterile fashion with betadine. Lidocaine jelly can be used to take away some of the irritation. The bladder is then drained with a straight catheter and a post void residual is obtained. An alternative method is to place the catheters into the patient and utilize the filling channel to evacuate any of the post void residual with a syringe. The complex systemetrogram can then be started. When placing the catheters, it is important to ensure that the pressure sensor cables are in the open position and that the sterile field is dry. Caps are placed on the catheters in the factory to protect them from getting any moisture in them. Any drops of water getting into the catheters will cause sensing errors, usually high pressures. The cap is then removed and the catheter is attached to the lure lock. When the washer fits snugly into the lure lock, it should be tightened an extra eighth of a turn using both hands to tighten. Before charging the catheter, it is placed into the patient in the open position which will get out any residual air that may still be in the balloons from the packing process. The pressure sensors are color-coded for convenience. Yellow represents vesicle pressure, green represents the urethral pressure, and blue represents abdominal pressure. Once the catheters are placed in the patient, there are several different ways in which to attach a catheter to the patient for stabilization. Besides a Velcro strap, the catheter can be attached by way of placing tape on the leg or directly connecting it to the puller. The vesicle dual sensor catheter should not be advanced more than 10 centimeters in females and 24 centimeters in males. In this case, the catheter is advanced about 8 centimeters. Six centimeters of the catheter would be in the bladder and another two centimeters would be in the urethra so that it is at the mid urethra where the maximal urethral closure pressure would be if using a dual sensor. The abdominal pressure sensing catheter is being placed vaginally. These specially designed abdominal catheters have a stylet built into them which allows for kinking and stability of the catheter. It can be placed at a right angle to act as a spring action to help maintain its position. Once it is in position, the patient should cough to get any of the excess air out before charging up the catheter. Rectal placement of the abdominal catheter is an alternative to vaginal placement, especially if there is prolapse present. Lubrication is administered around the anal canal and the catheter is placed to a depth of approximately eight centimeters. Proper placement is tested by having the patient tighten up her anal sphincter. If there is a deviation of the catheter reading, then the catheter is not deep enough and should be placed a little deeper. Another way in which to make sure that the rectal catheter is properly placed is to position a finger in the vagina and feel whether or not the rectal catheter is sliding along the anterior wall of the rectum. This will ensure a more accurate abdominal type of pressure sensing and may alleviate or decrease the risk of having stool come into effect. The catheter is taped very close to the vagina or rectum. If prolapse is present, a device should be used to reduce it, such as a ring or sponge forcep. Complex systemetrogram is completed in the usual fashion once proper volume is reached to accomplish first sensation, urge, and maximum bladder capacity and checking for any leakage. A Valsalva leak point pressure is done and in this patient is very easily demonstrated. Both the urethra and vesicle sensors can then be placed in the bladder to perform a urethral pressure profile, thus getting functional urethral length as well as maximal urethral closure pressure. A dynamic profile can then be performed to detect when a pressure transmission ratio goes negative and leakage occurred. A voiding pressure study can be performed and the study is completed once maximum bladder capacity has been reached. The beauty of the air charge catheters is that they are circumferential and therefore pick up more data from the urethra to more easily detect whether urethral instability 
or detrusor sphincter dyssynergia are present on the voiding pressure studies. At the conclusion of the case, the rapid turnover of the patient aids in improving efficiency and productivity in the office. It takes about a minute to disassemble the catheters from the patient and disconnect them. The catheters are thrown away. The Velcro strap is removed and placed over the side. The patient is dismissed from the procedure. The TDOC air charge catheter system makes a procedure quick, simple, and successful.